What's up everybody, Michael Silva here. You're watching the Stock Market Brief Show. Oh yeah. Sorry, I'm feeling goofy today. Bringing you this episode straight from PowerPoint. Look, I wanna ask you guys a question and think about, the, think about your answer here. Have you ever been too bearish and missed on out on an opportunity? Or vice versa, have you ever been too bullish and that blinded you to what could be potentially taking place in the markets that was very bearish? I want to break you from that way of thinking in today's episode. I'm going to be sharing with you bearish and bullish biases here and charts. And I really want you to get into the mindset like, okay, if this happens, I should probably become a little bit less bearish in the short term here. And if this happens, maybe I should continue down this path of being bearish. There are so many narratives out there and I understand the narratives. Trust me. We'll get into it. Actually, the, some of those narratives in today's episode. Well, let's just go ahead and get into today's episode. All right, welcome back. So yes, a lot of narratives out there, right? A lot of different things taking place. A lot of geopolitical risk. We had CPI data come out, right? Consensus and forecast was 7.9. Where do we come in at 7.9? Holy moly, inflation's getting out of hand. I tell you what, crazy, crazy, crazy stuff, I tell you. We got also a lot of geopolitical risks out there, right? So the Russia, Ukraine, and we don't know when that's going to settle down or if we're going to get another, you know, bad news event to really shake these markets up. So there's a lot of forecasting out there. There's a lot of guessing. There's a lot of narrative. So we got to just play what's in front of us and read the charts for what they are. And I'll tell you what, there's reasons to be bearish, but there's reasons to be bullish. And we're going to cover those. So what happened with the 7.9 print? Absolutely nothing really, right? We got down in the day. It was super bearish. Everyone's like, ah, and then all of a sudden it started rallying back up energy, you know, back up, right? I've been waiting for a better pullback in energy. We got a pullback in oil, right? And energy the other day, but it just came right back up right away. And super discretionary, more of a risk on type sector also led the way. And then you got utilities. Hmm. Interesting. That's more defensive sector that led the way. And then down here you have consumer staples, more defensive. And then you have technology, it was a mixed board today. That's what that was. Look, at typically we need the market to digest this information. Okay, how are we going to respond to all this? We have, you know, the FOMC um, minutes meeting coming up here soon too. You know, are they going to raise rates? Are they not going to raise rates? Are they going to surprise us with raising rates? La, 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 all this stuff. How did the indices do? Dow Jones down 0.34%. Nothing. S&P 500 down a half percent. Not much, right? It's been such a volatile environment. NASDAQ Composite was hit somewhat hard there, down a percent where the NASDAQ 100, sorry, NASDAQ Composite was down 0.95, NASDAQ 100 was down just over a percentage. And it did get back a lot of those intraday gains. It just gapped down um, pretty strong. Now, this is what I want to point out to everybody. I'm gonna, we're going to look at some of these indice charts. S&P 500, it cracked a major area of resistance, right? A lot of people are calling this, it's a head and shoulder top. You know, I'll be honest with you, a lot of head and shoulder tops have not been working out like all that great. But let's just say if this does meet a full measure move, that can take us down a lot deeper. And we are putting in lower highs and lower lows. But also to note, what you should pay attention to is look at just the volatility and the swings here taking place. So you're putting in lower highs, lower lows, but just notice how price is starting to tighten up here. And when price tightens up, right, from an expansion to a contraction, it could lead to an explosive move. Whether that's bullish or bearish type of move, I don't know yet. But there are things taking place, like, for example, positive divergence on the RSI. And if you pay even closer attention to the RSI, what you'll notice is, look at this sloping up and this sloping down. It's coiling up as well. Oh, not too many people talking about that one, I bet. This one right here too, right? The MACD coiling up as well. So we got to recapture that 4,300. But even if we do recapture 4,300, it still puts us, you know, <laughs> below all these moving averages and a trend that's still hurting. Now, overall, let's be real here. If you're super bearish, like understand this, right? You have all these reasons to be bearish. I get it. You have reasons to be bullish. I get it. But over, after everything said and done, what's been taking place right now with all the geopolitical risks, right? With out of coal, crazy inflation, with commodities acting like meme stocks, the market's down like 10%. Like, so with all of this going on, it's not, it's holding up relatively well here. So be on the lookout for some, like another, to really, to, what I'm trying to say here is it looks like, like selling is slowing down. It's like getting weaker here. 
So the only thing that's going to really drive more selling or a hit significantly lower, in my opinion, is going to be another sort of event risk to take place. So if another headline hits the tape, I think that we can see some further downside, more than possible. But as it stands right now, I mean, we have that high and we have a lower high. So if we don't take those out, you know, it's it's slowing down, in my opinion. That can change in a heartbeat. Now, keep in mind, like I said, we're already below a massive area of previous support. So that is now resistance and we're below those key moving averages, okay? Um, let's look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Very similar situation. Not much to point out here, except for, you know, like with the RSI, right? It's still positive, you know, positive uh, divergence. You can see it's coiling up very tightly here. Actually, surprisingly enough, if you look at the BP chart of industrials, look at this little guy little positive divergence hanging out right there. So industrials might be a little area to keep an eye on, right? So you have the BP chart putting in somewhat of a lower low right there, but you have the RSI putting in a higher low, okay? This is relatively flat. Now, what's, why, what's interesting about industrials, if we take a look at transports, transports make a big portion of the economy. And to see that strength come in today is, is data that we should not ignore from a bullish perspective. It was up 1.18%. And the RSI is now getting back above that 50 marker. It's still, you know, kind of right in that range right there, right? So if we start heading a little bit higher, that's going to be a good sign. And if you really take a look at this, this actually looks like it's somewhat of a wedge pattern here too. So if this starts breaking out, I think that it could be very positive. Um, another note is if you just look at the relative strength line between transports and the S&P 500, right? We're starting to head up higher right here, right? It's breaking from this downtrend. And then you also have a positive divergence on the MACD. So you have a lot of good things taking place. If you take a look at the NASDAQ 100, this one's been getting hit one of the worst, right? But you have the positive divergence of the MACD. You have the RSI putting in higher lows. You know, a couple things going on. A couple of things going on here. But in the bearish thing, in the bearish look, this was previous support. Now it's acting as resistance right now. So there's a lot of work that the bulls need to do. So if we get moves higher, understand that doesn't just fix the problem out of nowhere. But you need to be aware that we can see some aggressive rallies. NASDAQ composite also getting hit hard, right? Bearish trend, but you're starting to see that positive divergence in the RSI, positive divergence in the MACD. Let's keep going. The Wilshire 5000, same situation, positive divergence, positive divergence. We're starting to, you know, from expansion, we're contracting, we're getting tighter and tighter here. This is a good look at the broad market. And if we just take a look overseas, like they've been getting hit, hit very hard. So the German DAX, right, down 23% from peak to trough. And now we're starting to see a little bit of a relief rally here. We'll see here if that can hold its legs or start to base out. But that was a big, big move to the downside. Super, super aggressive. But it wasn't just the German DAX, also the French CAC down 22%. Now we're starting to see a relative big bounce too. And the reason why I'm showing these European indexes, indices, is because they do move um, with a pretty tight correlation to America, American indices, like the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, etc., so there's a pretty tight correlation there. So I understand why people are bearish. I mean, you can take a look at sentiment, right? So sentiment updated, the asset managers, the Rydex, what are asset managers doing? These are just sentiment surveys, all right? 42, so we're below 50. That was a little bit of an uptick from last week, right? And we haven't really been at these low levels really since, well, I mean, the pandemic low. And it got a little bit lower than that, but that took a pandemic, all right? And now we're here after you know, a, a pretty significant correction as of right now. But are we actually in a full-blown bear market yet? I mean, we are in some indices, that's for sure. Now, what's interesting about looking at the asset managers is if you just take a look, okay, so when it gets super bearish here, what happens? Well, actually, when we get below 50, it's actually marked some bottoms. So for example, when we cost, well, I guess 50 is right here, but I wanted to point out where we're at right now, where we're bouncing from. But when we get below 50, it has marked short-term bottoms. And the same thing is if you draw it down a little bit further, where we bounce from this 30 level, all right, when it got below 30, it started crossing back above 30, and that marked that bottom right here. It was bottoming right here, and then found this bottom right there. So it found temporary bounce, bounce lower, right in these areas too, this bottom, and this bottom. Okay, I, you don't want to put too much weight into this one specifically, but it's just something to note. It's just data. Um, S&P 500 looking at um, below us is the... Another sentiment survey. So the bulls and then the bears, and then you have the ratio here. Okay, and you can see here, it's getting pretty bearish. And the bulls are getting less bullish. All right, that makes sense. Given the current context of the market, if you just look at the ratio, it's also been heading lower. 
We've actually been talking about that divergence, why the market was moving higher and this divergence was continuing to just build. But now, I mean, where are we? We're, we're at 0.52, right? So down here, we've been down there for a while, rightfully so, the market's been selling off. But the last time we were there, you know, it was here. And then we started to build up strength coming out of the bottom. Here, same thing, boom, coming, coming out of the bottom. Right here, coming out of the bottom. Okay, so sentiment's bearish. Everywhere you turn, sentiment's very bearish. Some people are bullish, right? Some. But we just got to look at the data that we have in front of us. So if we take a look at the percent of stocks above the 50-day and the 200-day, these have been just getting clobbered, clobbered. Okay, and the market now is finally moving down, right? So we're starting to see lower highs, lower lows there. It's trending down. We're breaking some key supports. Resistance is holding. Support is breaking. But we're getting some overextended areas, and that's what we need to be mindful for. If we take a look at the advanced decline line on the New York Stock Exchange, we were talking about this when it broke down here. Notice how it broke down. Where was price at that time? It was up there. And that gave us an early indication saying, we talked about it, right? If you were here, you heard. If you weren't, well, it is what it is. It broke down saying that, okay, this bounce, I mean, it's happening, but the internals are weakening. And then it started heading down. And then finally it got that crack down lower. Now, if this starts turning up, that could be a good indication, especially for the New York Stock Exchange. But, you know, as it stands right now, this could be a lot of distribution taking place and we just cracked it. And now we're coming back up a little bit. Okay. So yeah, it's not looking so good right there. And on top of all of that, another bearish thing is the percent of stocks above the 200 day in the NASDAQ composite. The NASDAQ composite is comp composed of around 3,300 stocks. Okay, and it's basically saying that 80%, eight, more than 80% of the stocks are below that Godfather moving average right there, meaning that a lot of stocks are broken. And you can see that here, bam. All right, we talked about this one for a while, right? The price has been going higher and higher and higher. And then this was just falling off a cliff. We're like, all right, something's gonna break. Something's gonna break. And then all of a sudden, now we're starting to see weakness hitting into bear market territory in the NASDAQ composite. Now, can this go lower? Yeah, sure, it can go lower, but understand that this has been breaking down for quite some time, and now the index is finally catching up to that, okay? So at what point will this start turning up? That's a good question, I'm not too sure. Let's take a look at the indices now because I want to show you something that probably nobody's paying attention to or caught yet on the lower time frames. First and foremost, let's hop into the CPC, the buy and sell signal. The buy and sell signal almost triggered that buy signal, came down to 0.95. The other previous day, then we got this spike up. Now we got this spike back down. So the 10 period moving average is at 0.96 right now. Okay, so it's it needs to cross below 0.95 for that technical buy signal. We landed on it. It seemed like we we're going to get the bounce. We got the bounce. Then we said, respect the trend. We saw a little bit of a down day today. Now we just got to be patient because it's massive volatility. I want to introduce you to another indicator. This was originally created by the old fool, TOF. Um, I found out about this one using my stock charts platform by one of the um, uh, one of the users on the platform. David, I, I can't forget his last, I always forget his last name, Knepper. It's not Keller. It's not David Keller, but it is um, with a K. Besides the point, he gave credit to the old fool. What am I showing you here? This is actually dividing the NASDAQ composite into the put to call ratio. And what's interesting is when you put on a couple breadth indicators there, the 21 and the 50 period EMA, you can look for crossovers and it tells you a good indication where we might start seeing a shift in price action. And like, for example, right here, okay, crossed over the green below the blue. So the small one below the big one. And then look at right here, bam, we started trending down and this has been nice spread and trending lower. Okay. So what we need to do is wait for this one, obviously to cross back up through that give us maybe an early indication that this trend, we can see a bounce or start to trend back up, but we're not there yet, right? So I'll keep, I'll keep this in my back pocket and I'll show you when it triggers. Okay. And I'll match this up with a couple of other things, right? So right here was a buy signal, right? Boom. We started moving up higher sell signal, right? Boom. We started getting all choppy. Then we got that buy signal. We started moving up and then we got that sell signal and we started moving down. So it's pretty darn accurate. Um, and, and it gives us an early indication into maybe, you know, give us more confidence in a shift in trend. Now on the VIX, looking at some more sentiment here. We did crack that trend line, okay? So that could be really relevant, right? It's been a very steep trend line up, but understand even if it came down to 26 and then started bouncing, that would still be a higher low. 
but this is still potentially pretty relevant. I do notice that the PPO is about to have a bearish crossover. RSI is still pointing down, but it is above 50 at this particular point in time, and the VIX is still above 30. So it is still in a period, an area where it's volatile. And if you take a look at the 15 minute time frame, you can see we cracked that channel, we broke down, we did fill one of those gaps. Let's go to the VXN. This is NASDAQ volatility, NASVOL. And this trend, notice here, it hasn't cracked. The VIX did, but we have that bearish crossover potentially taking place and the RSI is still pointing down too. So are we gonna see some further downside here, potentially lending hand to a bullish type move here in the indices? Maybe. Now let's take a look at RVX, very same situation. Trending up, boom, no trend line crack, right? PPO, looks like it's about to have a bearish crossover, RSI pointing down, all right? Now, this is what I found interesting that I don't think too many people, I don't think anybody talked about this, all right? Because I don't think too many people use the 15 minute time frame. And if they do, awesome. It doesn't really matter who found it, but the, the, what matters is you see it at least. This is the Wyckoff accumulation pattern. And I'm not gonna walk you through how this particularly works. I'm no by, by no means a professional Wyckoff analysis uh, analyst, okay? But I do know s some basics of it. And I'll give you a, an idea and show you why this is so important and why I'm seeing this actually on smaller time frames. So first and foremost, I'll just tell you what the acronyms mean. So PS means preliminary support. SC means selling climax. AR is automatic rally. And then the ST is a secondary test. And then you can see it bouncing around and there's a spring area and basically in simple a spring or a shakeout, it, it occurs later on in this pattern of you know, bouncing around the support and resistance. And it it's it's a way to shake out some final loose hands, some loose, uh, maybe, you know, uh, undercut the low and then it has a little bit of a shakeout, right? Okay, and then it starts potentially moving higher and then we go through what's called jumping the creek. So getting back above it and then doing a back test. Now the back test is actually what you wanna wait for because this could be just a quick trip up and then it heads back down. So the backup and, and confirming resistance then becomes support is actually the most important aspect in all of this. So you need to pay attention to that. But let's go ahead and look at the IWM on the 15 minute time frame. Tell me that that doesn't look like a Wyckoff accumulation pattern there. It looks very similar, right? So you can have, you can see it, right? We pull, and by the way, these lines right here, that's not support and resistance. That the, that's the weekly risk range, okay? The weekly risk range that was priced in uh, last Friday. And we, you can see we've been just building, building open interest within this. So it's going to be an explosive move, whether that's the downside or the upside. I don't know, but you know, something, something's going to happen eventually here. Okay. So yeah, PS, which is the preliminary support. So it came down, right? Price, boom, bounce. And then we started heading down, which is the selling climax. Now you might consider this potential selling climax. I don't know, right? But then you have an automatic rally, rally, and then you have the um, the ST, which is the secondary test. And then you have a spring. This could very well be the potential spring where you kind of move in through this. And then we're kind of forming what could be, you know, it could be this right here. It could be, um, this could be just the move, uh, you know, the sp uh, move higher and then we're pulling back and now we have, we'd have to basically break out of this area. But what I want to po point out is just the similarities here and how you should not be ignoring this. Now, this doesn't mean just, okay, now I'm going to go long. All right. Understand if I do an overlay, you can see the similarities here a little bit better, but an overlay would suggest that we do start to move higher. If that's the case, and once we get to that specific point, however long that takes, when it breaks out, you don't buy the breakout. You want to buy the back test to make sure that support, um, the resistance turns into support and it actually holds. So that is actually a very key, key aspect in all of this. Now you can play the range. That's absolutely, totally fine. This still very well, you know, could head down further. All right. And, and even if it does, that's okay. But what you want to do is wait for that confirmation to feel a little bit more confident um, that this could very well be a bottoming pattern in the IWM, which would lend hand, right? Well, lend well to um, the seasonality perspective and coming into quarter end, potentially seeing that markup. Now, it's not just the IWM on the 15 minute time frame. If you take a look at the SPY, I mean, they're all doing something very similar here, right? Where you're getting these moves down, you're getting these rallies, you're getting secondary tests. This could very well be a potential shakeout area or a spring. And then you get this rapid run up, right? And then it's kind of doing its doodling around here. So we can't rule that out. It's always a possibility that this is potentially just right in front of us. It's as simple as that. 
Now, keep in mind, there's also, you know, that, you know, it's still bearish, right? This could very well be a bear flag. And we're going to crack down, crack through all of this and start heading lower. Okay, fine. Let it be. But if we start heading up higher, understand if we start looking for those back tests, you know, it could, it could very well present itself as a nice move higher. And then the same thing goes with the Q's, right? The Q's came down. We, you know, did a shakeout here. We came and retested over here and we're starting to head a little bit higher. Always be mindful that these could still be bear flags. Another thing to call out in all of this is just pay attention to the five period moving average. You want to feel a little bit more confident. You would want the five, the purple line, by the way, the five day moving average to start trending upward, right? You want price action to get above it. You want price action to hold above it. So this starts flattening out and then you want to put in higher highs, higher lows where this starts turning up. All right. That'll feel a little bit more confident because as it stands right now, you got to respect the trend, right? It's going down. Boom. It's going down the SPY, SPY, boom, 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 it's going down. And the same thing goes with the IWM. It's actually, IWM is actually neutral. So it was down, but now as you can see, it's actually relatively flat. So you're seeing some relative strength here um, versus the other indices. So pay attention to the IWM. If it starts cracking down through these uh, previous double bottom right here, then I'd be a little bit wary overall. That's all I got for you on today's episode, everyone. I hope, hopefully, you know, I gave you some insight into why you should be potentially, if you're super bearish, maybe you should pay attention a little bit more to the bullish aspect of things. And if you're super bullish, maybe you should pay attention to the, the bearish aspect of things too as well. Hopefully I laid out enough scenarios there, gave you some insight into some of these indicators. And I'll let you know that I will be bringing some of those indicators, including the old fool indicator back when things change. All right, everybody, that's all I got for you. Have a wonderful night.